Let's go ahead and recap some of the main points from this section of the course. When we look around us, all of the things that we see are made of matter. Matter has mass. It could be weighed if we had a very sensitive scale. Um, even the smallest things do have a mass. And so if we just kind of think about that, think about matter, what is matter made of? Well, it's made of very tiny particles. If you put a lot of those particles together, then you, you might end up with something um, substantial that you can see, like a textbook or, or what, whatever you happen to be looking at in front of you. Um, so matter is made of these very tiny particles, and those particles, the primary unit that we like to think about is the atom. Okay, so matter consists of atoms that are clumped together. So let's talk about atoms. Atoms have a particular structure. The structure of an atom is something like this. Atoms consist of uh, three primary sort of constituents. There are protons in the middle. Um, the protons are identified in red in this schematic. And then there are neutrons also in the middle of the atom. Okay, so the protons and the neutrons, they hang out in the very center of the atom. And then somewhere around the periphery is a region where electrons tend to hang out. And in terms of charges, electrons and protons have opposite charges. So we tend to, we refer to protons as being positively charged and electrons as being negatively charged. The neutrons, on the other hand, they are neutral. They don't have a charge. So protons, neutrons, and electrons, those are the three key subatomic particles that you should be aware of. And all put together, they help to make up one atom. All right, now, atoms of the same element all have the same number of protons. So the number of protons for a given atom, this is kind of a very characteristic thing. This is what we call the atomic number. So atomic number, that's an important thing to know about. Atomic number, that's the number of protons that exists. And this is really characteristic of an atom. This tells us which type of element we're dealing with. So for example, um, just to kind of describe what do we mean by elements? Okay, well, atoms come in different varieties. We could talk about the element gold, for example, or we could talk about the element carbon, for example. Those are two very different elements. Um, either one is made up of atoms, but the number of protons would be different in those two different types of materials. Okay, so gold is gonna have one set number of protons in its atoms. Carbon is gonna have a different set number of protons in its atoms. All right, another thing that we refer to sometimes is the mass number. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And approximately what that does is it gives us a measure of how heavy the atom is, about how much does the atom weigh. Mostly it's due to these subatomic particles. So sum up all of these values, number of protons, number of neutrons, that gives us the mass number. It's possible to have uh, sort of different styles of atoms of the same element. Okay, so we could be talking about gold, look at one atom and then look at another one. They might have slightly different masses. And the reason for that is that the number of neutrons can vary. Okay, so number of protons, this is fixed for a given element, but number of neutrons, this can actually vary. It's not always necessarily the same. So that leads us to the idea of isotopes. Isotopes is just describing this fact that we can have um, sort of these different varieties, different number of neutrons in different atoms of the same element. We've got lots of new words floating around in this section, so it's a good one to um, take your time with, just to sort of think about each of these new words, um, maybe play the video again, just to make sure that this is all starting to sink in. One more phrase here um, to be familiar with, the atomic mass. What this is talking about is an average. It's an average mass number for all the atoms of a particular element. Okay, so remember we just described we can have different isotopes for a given element. Um, if we take the average of all of them, the average mass number of all of those atoms, take the average, that gives us the atomic mass. So this is like an average, it's sort of characteristic for the element as a whole. 
and this is something that uh, we're going to see on the next slide when we look at a periodic table. The atomic mass is something that's reported on the periodic table. Finally, just one more note of interest here before we move on regarding isotopes. Some isotopes are actually radioactive. And what does that mean? You've probably heard that word before, radioactive, but maybe you haven't thought about what it means. Um, so what is that all about? Radioactivity is um, describing the fact that sometimes atoms will lose subatomic particles over time. So maybe this atom, maybe if we um, if we just sort of hang around for years and years and years and, and watch it, maybe what would happen is one of these neutrons would get ejected. And so then the atom has, has changed. It's still the same, same atom, but it's lost a subatomic particle. And um, when atoms do this, when they lose particles, subatomic particles, or when they lose certain types of energy, um, that's called emitting radiation. So radioactive isotopes, they have this possibility of decaying. The nucleus can decay over time. Radiation is something that can cause damage. It can be very dangerous, but it can also be a very useful tool. Radioactivity is useful in certain types of medical imaging techniques. Um, very small amounts of radioactivity can be used to sort of see inside of the human body. So it's not something that's always bad. It, it can actually be a very useful tool as well. So let's go on, let's take a look at a periodic table. The periodic table organizes all sorts of information about different elements. And here's what it looks like. Okay, so we've got all of these different elements sort of laid out here. Each box represents one particular element. This first one in the top left, this represents hydrogen. And if we just take a close up of that one little box, let's take a look at what's being represented inside. So there is a symbol. That symbol is representing the element hydrogen. And then we've got the atomic number. You remember what that was talking about? What was the atomic number? You can pause the video, take a second, see if you can remember what's an atomic number. What is that telling you? And you should be coming to the conclusion that this is how many protons um, exist inside of all of the atoms for hydrogen. Okay, so each hydrogen atom has one proton inside of it. The atomic mass, remember this one, this one is an average. This is an average. If we look at all, if, if we look at a whole bunch of hydrogen atoms and take their average mass, this is what we get. Okay, so it's a little bit greater than one. That's accounting for the fact that some atoms of hydrogen have neutrons inside of them. So that makes them a little bit heavier than what it would have been just based off of a proton. Okay, so that's, that's that. Atomic number in the upper left, atomic mass kind of right in the middle, the element's name at the bottom, and the element's symbol right in the middle. Some of the atom, excuse me, some of the elements that we will be dealing with particularly in this class um, with regards to living things, let me just point them out to you. Hydrogen, for sure, is going to be very important. Um, over here in this area, carbon is very, very important. All living things have uh, carbon-based chemistry, so we'll be seeing a lot of this element. Um, what else do we have? Oxygen and also nitrogen. These are sort of the four most important, I guess, we, if we had to pick four that were most important. Those are the, the atoms that most molecules are built from primarily in living things. So we'll be seeing more of those as we go.